Welcome to Mayo Clinic q and I'm Dr. Helena Gazelka. Back with us today, we are privileged to have Mayo Clinic infectious disease and vaccine expert, Dr. Greg Poland. Dr. Poland, thanks for joining us again. Yes, of course. It's wonderful to have you here. Since we last spoke uh, last week, the big news comes from the CDC with the recommendations for masking. And I'm wondering if you could bring us up to speed. Yeah, um, this is a really important strategy to be talking about. You know, in the U.S. as of today, we're talking about roughly a third of a million cases in the U.S. and getting close to 10,000 deaths. So the idea here is how do you layer strategies, in a sense, more and more strategies to decrease the risk of transmission from person to person? So that's one point. The second point is we should really distinguish between medical masking, that's a whole different category, and public masking, if you will, with cloth masks. We don't want to be taking surgical and N95 masks away from uh, healthcare workers that are on the front, literally, versus making our own cloth or buying cloth masks uh, for use in the public. The third point is the reason to do this, even though they're not quite the same efficacy, as medical masks is that they do have efficacy and they are not only um, a way of decreasing breathing in the virus primarily through large respiratory droplets but also a behavioral reminder that there's a pandemic and life is not the same right now and a reminder not to put our hands in our eyes nose or mouth until we've washed our hands but there are also some dangers that we should talk about in terms of using a mask okay so, um, oh, okay. No, tell us about those, Greg. <laughs> okay, so some of those dangers uh, would be once a mask gets wet, maybe from our exhalation, it really begins to decrement in effectiveness in filtering any sort of respiratory particulate matter. So that's one thing, it would need to be changed. The second thing is you do yourself no favor if you wear a mask and then touch the mask, either to adjust it or take it off in the wrong way. So, you know, as medical professionals, we're taught how to put a mask on, how to take a mask off, but this would be unfamiliar to the public. And I think the key thing is that you want a mask that's, you know, comfortable, but still tight fitting over the nose and mouth. Sometimes you see people wearing a mask that just goes above their upper lip. Mm -hmm. But the most important thing is once that's wet, once you're going to take it off, you take it off through however you're holding it onto your head. You do not touch the front of the mask. And then that mask needs to be washed before it would be used again. And, you know, just washing with soap and water in your uh, laundry machine, whatever it is, is, is quite satisfactory. You don't need to go to any extreme lengths. Greg, could we just go back to the beginning a little bit? You okay. talked about um, medical masks versus masks that the public might wear, such as cloth masks. What does it mean for something to be an N95 mask? Yeah, so the idea behind an N95 mask is it has a filtering ability down to and actually below the size of the coronavirus. So the <laughs> coronavirus is about 0.12 microns in diameter, and N95 protects down to 0.1 with 95% efficiency, which, which is where it gets its name. That's not the same as a cloth medical mask or the cone uh, mask that you see, nor is it the same as a, as a homemade cloth mask. Okay, so the purpose of face co coverings. I feel like sometimes they've talked about protecting patient, sometimes protecting the public from me. What is the, is there a difference among the masks about what purpose they serve? Yeah, the, the, probably the, the most important function of a mask when you're talking about outside the medical setting among the public is if, uh, if I had COVID-19, and I might not even know it, by the way, so it's not like I'm sneezing and coughing and have a fever, but it's apparent that you could transmit the virus when you are asymptomatic or pre-symptomatic. So in that case, we're preventing me exhaling the virus or respiratory particulate matter out onto the public and into the air where others might get infected. 
the, and, and masks are pretty effective in, in that. The other side of the coin, if you will, is protecting those who are not infected from becoming infected by breathing in contamin air contaminated with virus or respiratory uh, particulate matter. So why do the recommendations keep changing? Just yeah. last week, we weren't advised to wear masks, and now we are. Yeah, I, I think for a couple of reasons. And, uh, you know, in fairness, what the government and medical institutions are wrestling with is they're, they're trying to thread the needle in the best way possible because it, it does get a little confusing. We don't want the public to think that the recommendation is for medical masking. That would be detrimental to us as a society. Healthcare providers and patients who are sick with the disease need those masks. Okay, so we're talking again about the cloth masking that we would do in public. The second point about that is concern among many that the data is um, at least um, uh, controversial in, in some ways as to how much benefit it offers. And people are concerned that if we go to a cloth masking recommendation that people will drop their level of, of preparedness by social distancing, by hand washing, uh, et cetera. And we don't want that to happen. So, uh, and then thirdly, the, the, the issue of how do you doff your mask? How do you take your mask off safely and clean it? So for all of those reasons, there was controversy and discussion back and forth over a couple of weeks mm -hmm. uh, at the national level as to whether to make a public recommendation. And I think they've done the right thing. You know, I've looked on the internet trying to purchase masks and I have found, I've looked on the internet trying to purchase a mask and I have found that you can't order one right now. If individuals are going to use a type of fabric, is there any type of fabric that's better than another or that they should choose for their, to make, to make their makeshift mask? Yeah, we can, we can make a, a couple of general observations. None of us are fabric scientists, but we can make some general recommendations. One is the tighter the weave, the better. Hmm. The mm -hmm. second is the more the layers, the better. Of course, you bump up against the ability to breathe comfortably if you have uh, too many layers. Um, the other thing is that people can go to the CDC website where they do have some discussion about this. And more importantly, they actually talk about and illustrate how to make your own mask, which I think is important so yeah. people understand. And again, don't make something that's not protective and that would give them false reassurance. That makes sense. Yeah. You know, I've noted that in other countries, wearing masks seems to be more common when we've had some of these viruses in the past. Do you think Americans are really going to get on board with this? Yeah, that's, a, that's a great question. We have sort of uh, seen that Asian countries tend to more readily wear these. I've observed that for decades uh, when I travel, particularly over uh, into China and, and, and to the Pacific Rim countries. I think that more than likely when, when all of this is cleared up and we look back, I think we're going to more readily mask in the winter time when we have a lot of respiratory viruses circulating. And I, you know, I know people are very concerned about COVID-19, and rightly so. But every year, we face epidemics bigger than this. I mean, just this year in the U.S., just the U.S., we're talking about 30 million people who were infected with influenza. Wow. 500,000 of them were so sick they were hospitalized, and 30,000, not 10,000 like COVID, 30,000 have already died of influenza, including over 150 children. So I, I think we're going to probably pay more attention to vaccine compliance, mm -hmm. and, and I hope as a public, uh, sort of a cultural milieu where you don't go to school or work when you're sick. And you mask uh, during that time of, of heavy transmission. Yeah, that going, not going to work when you're sick is a tough one. For... Yeah, <laughs> it is. Um, do you have anything else you'd like to share before we close, Dr. Poland? Um, the only other uh, comment, I, I meant to make some general comments about masking. So the, 
the tighter the weave, the more the layers. And then there has been some studies looking at types of, uh, of fabric. For example, um, uh, high, high quality woven t-shirts tend to be better than, for example, scarves, cotton mm -hmm. towels that are thicker with tight weaves tend to be better. So there, there are some materials that appear to be better than others in the few studies that have been done. And again, you can find that on the CDC website. Well, that's great. Well, this is great information you shared with us today. And I appreciate Dr. Greg Poland being present with us on Mayo Clinic uh, Question and Answer. And uh, Dr. Poland, Poland is an infectious disease expert and a vaccine expert, and he has been visiting with us regularly. Uh, stay well until the next time we meet again, Greg. Thank you. You too. Mayo Clinic Q&A is a production of the Mayo Clinic News Network and is available wherever you get and subscribe to your favorite podcasts. To see a list of all Mayo Clinic podcasts, visit newsnetwork.mayoclinic.org. Then click on podcasts. Thanks for listening and be well. We hope you'll offer a review of this and other episodes when the option is available. Comments and questions can also be sent to Mayo Clinic News Network at mayo.edu.